recently made a TikTok and I was just talking about how I was tired of being on this mountain of weight loss. It's like I'm going around the mountain, I'm going around the mountain, and it's just like, or I start, I stop, I start, I stop. And I was like, I just gotta stop self sabotaging at this point. And sometimes I feel like we get into these setbacks and we get stuck in the setback and that is the problem. And the thing about a setback is setbacks are natural in life in general. So the thing is you have to be able to catch it. But I feel like if you have the right strategies, you honestly can bounce back and bounce back very quick, but you gotta catch it. Catch it! Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and here on my channel, we are all about creating a life you love. So that being said, we're gonna hop into today's video. So last week, I put up a video, and you guys loved it. I talked about how I romanticized my weight loss journey, and I lost 35 pounds. Check it out if you have not. Like, the girls is loving that video. So much comment, so many comments, so much support, so many views. Love it for me, love it for you. So let's get on this weight loss journey, because at this point, we're in it together. I personally need to lose, I, I, I said I want to lose 30 pounds, but I think, I think it's 25 at this point. I'm not good at math, but I think I need to lose 25 now at the point that I am. So let's just have a little chat about like setbacks in general. Like what do you do when you have a setback in your weight loss journey? What do you do when you have a cheat day? What do you do when you fall off for like weeks? Like how do you get back in the spirit? How do you get back on your plan? Like how do you get back into the rhythm and the groove? First things first is you have to be able to be real with yourself and even acknowledge that there's a setback. Sometimes I feel like we dibble and dabble on social media and they tell you, oh, it's about balance. But they're not being realistic about what balance actually looks like. You can't have multiple cheat meals throughout the week and call that balance. Because the more you do it, you're setting an example for that behavior to be okay, for one. And two, when you have these cheat meals and you're out eating, like you don't know how many calories are actually in those meals. And nine times out of ten, you go on over your calorie expenditure and it's just like all that stuff begins to add up. And next thing you know, it the scale is up 10 pounds. But you got to be real with yourself and say, you know what? I eat out too much. I don't work out enough. Like you have to be real with yourself to even get started, honestly. And once you're like actually real with yourself, you have to kind of go backwards and reassess your goals. Like... Is this even realistic for me? Is this even achievable for me? Is this still what I want to do? So take a look at your goals. And then once you take a look at your goals, the goal might be big. Like specifically for me, my goal was 60 pounds. Like that's a lot to look at like on a number line, like 60, that's a lot. So the thing that you have to do is you have to break your goals down into small manageable goals. So maybe go every 10 pounds, every five pounds. So celebrate yourself like, I need to lose 10 pounds. You're down 10 pounds. Like, let's go. Let's get a new workout outfit. Let's try a new workout class. Like really reward those small, I mean, not even small, really reward those wins that you have for yourself. And people might think five pounds is not a lot, but five pounds is a lot. And you worked your ass off to lose those five pounds. So celebrate yourself and celebrate yourself in a healthy way. Go do something fun, try a new class, get a smoothie, buy you some little lemon, like, but make it, I feel like you have to make it an enjoyable experience to want to keep doing this. Then you have to actually fall in love with the lifestyle, honestly. Another thing that you can do is you might have to go back and revisit your why. Like, why are you actually doing this? Is it for somebody else? Is it for you? Um, is it for your health? Do you just not feel comfortable in your skin? And like specifically for me, that was my thing. I'm like, I've been like an overweight child my whole life. The one time I actually got down, like I got down to the size that I am now, then I just randomly got a thyroid problem and gained like 40 pounds over the span of like two months and couldn't lose the weight. So you have to go back and revisit the why. So for me, I just wanted to feel comfortable in my skin. Like I've gone my whole life never feeling comfortable in my skin. And next year I'm getting married. Next year I'm turning 30. And next year I'm going to be a Like legit, like I just feel like I owe it to myself. Like 
how can you go your whole life and you've never gotten the body that you wanted? And it's not like I'm trying to go sit on somebody's table for it. Like I'm working for it. I'm doing what I need to do for it. And I feel like making this experience more exciting, more fun can help you wheel back on those setbacks for sure. Because sometimes the setbacks are, are getting to the gym. But the thing is, you don't have to go to the gym to lose weight, y'all. Like you can do fun and exciting things. You can go for a walk. Like when I tell y'all, I lost a good 10 pounds just walking outside. Now, mind you, I'm in Texas, so it's hot. So I was out there sweating bullets. But like last summer, lost 10 pounds. I was only walking because I had sprained my ankle. So once I got back up and moving after my sprained ankle, I was walking outside and I was doing a Pilates YouTube video. But I lost 10 pounds without stepping foot in the gym. So, I mean, you can go for walks. If you like to dance, just turn on music and dance. Like, the thing is, we got to get our bodies, like, moving. And honestly, I think that's why I feel like in college, it was a lot more easier to lose weight. Because, I mean, if you go into a big college, I was to Michigan State. So, I was walking campus. Campus is huge. So, it's like, I'm getting in a lot more steps. And that's why you hear people say, like, get those 10K steps in. Get you a watch that's going to count your steps. Get you something that's going to count your steps because that can too keep you motivated, keep you excited. Like you're hitting a goal every day. So it's like you have to make this like a rewarding experience, y'all. And then with like when it comes to like, you know, tracking your steps, start to think about how you can actually track your other progress. Like are you weighing in? How often are you weighing in? Get you guys a good scale. Like, I got this scale off a of TikTok shop, y'all. This scale tells me my BMI, my body fat percentage, my muscle mass, my water, like how much water I'm retaining. It tells me, like, the visceral fat I have. Like, get you guys a good scale. And this scale, like, Bluetooth to my phone, so I have all my stats on my phone. Um, it gives me a chart, too. So it's like, I can see the downward, like, curve in the graph from me making the progress and losing that weight but I feel like when you see stuff like that it gets you more motivated and honestly sometimes you can be doing stuff all right and the scale just does not move but that's why I think it is so vital and so important to get a good scale because I had a time where the scale was literally just not moving but then I started to look at the specs inside the app and my body fat percentage was going down. So it's like, you can't really focus on that number. I feel like just have the number there for support. Um, and then another thing you can track as far as like non-scale victories is like start to track your measurements. Start to really feel and see how your clothes fit. Um, specifically, I had this app where you kind of just stand there and it like scans your body. And it'll do your measurements for you. And it's all in this app. I can't remember that. But I, when, when I remember it, I'll put it on the screen. The app, it like puts your silhouette into the app. And then you can slide this like, it's like a scale. But like you can slide it all the way up into like 15 pounds. So you can actually like see your silhouette losing weight. So get you something that's going to help you see your progress as well. Um, another thing would be to get you guys some good support. And I feel like this honestly can be hard if you're trying to get support from like family and friends. And honestly, sometimes family and friends are just not on the same type of time you want. But I would say the thing about this social media, and I wouldn't say probably like Instagram, but like TikTok, you gonna find the support of girlies on TikTok. You might find you a nice little tribe on TikTok. Um, and I feel like it's important to share your journey. And I feel like the more and the more authentic you are, you can have like meet great people who can help keep you motivated, help keep you accountable and just give you a nice support system. And even just surrounding yourself with people who are like minded. Honestly, I feel like support can look like surrounding yourself with the right people. Like they don't have to say anything to you, but they're living the life that you want to live as well, which honestly is going to support you in the end. So yes this one i kind of struggle with i'm probably just not getting better with it but it is practice self-compassion like 
you cannot speak negatively like over your body because honestly i just feel like we are some weird powerful freaky little things because our bodies keep us alive like legit legit but like if you're talking bad about your body it's gonna start breaking down or it's gonna stay like in the same state that you're speaking over your body and i honestly can say like when i was having the thyroid issue I was just talking so negative about myself. I felt like my body was failing me. And it was just like, why? Like, why do I keep having to go through stuff like this? So in that process, I had a cancer scare as well. So at that point, I had to reframe my mind. And I'm like, no. I had to speak healing. I had to speak life over my body. And you have to speak healing. You have to speak life over your weight loss process. Because when I tell y'all... I walk past the, the mirror and I be like, oh girl, you is skinny. You is skinny and y'all booty is getting fat. Like you literally have to hype yourself up. Even if you're not there, just start saying it. And I guarantee you, you're going to start to see that in the mirror. But you got to say it. You got to love on yourself. Like our bodies do so much work to keep us alive. So much to keep us safe. Like just think about it. Like I know, shoot, just being in America, we all got a little bit of trauma but like your brain literally is keeping you here. And then last, but certainly not least, is you have to visualize your success. If you've been on my channel, I'm very big on like visualizing your success, like visualizing what you want out of life, visualizing what you want to look like. Um, I'm a Pisces, so I don't know if that has to do anything with it, but I've always been like a dreamy, daydreamy kind of girl. So for me, like after I'm done working out, if I have time, I will sit in the sauna and I will turn on meditation music and I will literally envision my body like skinny, like snatched, like wearing the clothes that I want to wear, like really get into the feeling and I really get into the emotion. Um, and I think the biggest thing that you have to do is you have to imagine like how you're going to feel when you actually get the body that you want. Like feel those emotions so deep that at that point you're setting up the vibration and it's just going to come true anyway. And I'm going to add one more tip because I don't know if I said this, but I think I was supposed to attach it to my first tip. But it's to when you have to acknowledge your setback, that doesn't mean like fall into the emotion of, oh my God, I messed up on my diet. Oh, like go into a binge spree. Like. The thing with this setback stuff, like, you just can't stay there. Like, it's it's as simple as that. Like, you cannot stay there. You cannot stay in your mistake. Like, okay, I made a mistake. Sorry. On to the next one. Like, oh, I had pizza for lunch. Let me go make a stir fry for dinner. Like, you literally just have to set yourself up for success and don't look back in the past. Like, okay, you did it. So what? And it's just time to move on. Um, and I kind of talk a little bit more about that in my video I posted last week um, where I talked about how I romanticized my weight loss journey. So if you guys want to hear a little bit more about that, I will link that video here for you guys. But with that being said, I hope this video helps you guys with your setbacks. I hope this video makes you feel and know that you're not alone when it comes to these setbacks in this weight loss journey. And you have to be a strong person in a weight loss journey because it is so easy to say the same like so easy the challenge is you have to do things different when everybody around you still might be doing the same thing and it's like you literally have to die to your flesh like you have to die to wanting those cookies you have to die to not want to go to the gym like you have to set yourself up for success and you have to want better for yourself but anywho at this point i'm rambling so i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe Kissing in Paris, I guess we could do it in French. Wow. Eating low main is child for now. Child, child. She got me wildin' now. Rory, you're tired, child for now. Child.